בעזרת השם. בשם השם נעשה ונצליח, ויהי נועם אדוני אלוהינו עלינו מעשה ידינו כוננה, עלינו מעשה ידינו כוננה. אוקיי, good evening everyone, שלום עליכם, שבוע טוב, חודש טוב ומבורך. בעזרת השם, it was a long time since I did a shiur here, no? Ah, in this, uh, in this synagogue. Actually, I did one in Hebrew, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the dedications in a moment, yeah. Bezrat Hashem. So first of all, Bela bat chaya lea, refuah shelema, yam, maya bat chaya lea, refuah shelema, refuah tanef, shelfuah tagu, vegam, kamu? Tolik, et ashto, et ha, et ha, zbushan yadusha? Ha? Oh, so it's the Zvashan Yadusha. Leilu Nishmat, Tolik Netanel Ben Sarah, Ruach Hashem, Tenachenu Began Eden. Bezrat Hashem, Atzlacha Nam Psyem. I'm talking in Russian. Yeah, 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 yeah. For success for all of us, Bezrat Hashem. We're preparing for Pesach today. And um, they told me to speak about the Agadah Shel Pesach. The seder, how it's um, how it should look like. Bezat Hashem, we will bring a few secrets and explanations, things that we need to know to be more inspired when we sit in the night of Pesach. Things that we need to pass to the next generation, to our kids and grandkids, also. And Bezat Hashem, they say that. Preparation for something is always more important. It's more important than the actual um, the actual mitzvah. Sometimes. So today we're doing a big thing. It's preparation for Pesach. Bezat Hashem. I want to start with a with a story because we're gonna say some stories today. Because one of the most important things in Agadah Shel Pesach is to tell our kids about all what happened in Mitzrayim. Every word we say, even just talking to them, saying, you know, there was a paro, paro did this, there was this makkah, that makkah. All this in the night of Pesach, every word you say, you fulfill a mitzvah from Torah. Like you sit in sukkah, like you put filin, like you doing birkat amazon. Same mitzvah, every word you say to your kid. Or to your spouse also. Because if you don't have kids with you on the table, you should say it to your spouse. If you don't have a spouse, you should say it to yourself. Vigata, but to say that on that night, it's a big mitzvah. So... I want to tell, I want to start with uh, Bezat Hashem with, uh, with a story from Rabbi Nachman from Breslov. Rabbi Nachman brought this story as a mashal, as a parable. And uh, me, myself, I got very inspired by this mashal. This mashal is connected directly to Pesach. But the message of this mashal is to the whole year. So Rabbi Nachman says one time he was saying to his students a story and he was calling it Maase Mi Maror A story of a Maror You know what Maror means Maror is the the bitter thing that we eat on Pesach Now before we start the story we have to understand that there is a big difference between the Ashkenazi custom of Maror and the Sfaradi custom of Maror The Ashkenazi custom of Maror is very very bitter they eat this white, um, how you call it? Horse radish. Horse Yeah, so the, like horse. Okay, horse radish and chen. And this is very, 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 if it's the real one, very uh, spicy, bitter. Like almost as, I never ate it, but people say that it's like mamash, it's mamash. Makes you cry, exactly. Yeah. Now you have to eat a kazayit of it. Kazayit is like almost 30 grams. And not just one. Kazayit, it's the first time. And then we do korech. Korech is the sandwich. 
and another kazayir in the sandwich. So, bekitzu, th- th- this is like not an easy thing, and it's very bitter and very not tasty. While the sfaradim, Baruch Hashem, is the you know, we eat the the lettuce. Lettuce is nice, you know. It's also a little bit bitter. You feel the bitterness, but that's the lettuce. Uh, actually, in the Talmud, it says that lettuce is the real um, marol. However, with the time in Ashkenaz, Germany, Poland, they I think didn't have much lettuce, so they used that instead. Uh, you want to do also too. So, <laughs> Rabbi Nachman lived in Ukraine 200 years ago, and he's talking about the maror, the horseradish maror, the, the bitter one. Okay, that was the maror. They didn't have any other maror. And one day, Rabbi Nachman from Breslau says the story. The story was in Germany. Once upon a time. In Germany, there was two beggars. Beggars is people that don't have money and they beg for food and money. One of them was Jewish, the other one was not Jewish, German. And the Jewish beggar told to his friend, the German one, listen, Pesach is coming. So the friend says, Shuhada Pesach, what is that? What is, what is Pesach? He says, Pesach is the biggest Jewish holiday and in this holiday, if you are a Jew, they have to invite you. Because we say in the Haggadah, Kol like everybody who wants, come in. So technically, every house you will knock at that night, and you will play as a Jew, you will have a very, very good meal. So let me teach you, says the Jewish beggar to the non-Jewish beggar, let me teach you what you need to know so they're not going to be suspicious that you are, you know, just coming for the food. So he told him, listen, in the beginning, there is like a whole ceremony. First of all, we take a wine and we stand and we sing and we do like different blessings. And then, watch, they all go wash their hands and they don't say anything, they don't say a blessing. Then they eat a small little celery. They dip it in the salty water. Eat the celery, you know, like say something. You know, you have to say something with your lips. After that, you have to wait for a while. They are saying like a whole story of Egypt and explaining it. And you have to wait. And they do different weird things with wine. And they're dropping the wine and the and and, and, uh, you know... uh, other plate and like different things and after that long time you have to be very very patient then they have the matzah they eat crackers you know you have to eat like a certain amount of cracker after you fit you finish that cracker he forgot to say about the maror <laughs> and he didn't tell him the maror and then he told him there is a then you know uh, uh, you have like a sandwich and then you have this and that but and then you eat the food he forgot to tell him about the mother and this guy is coming to that family that he chose knocks on the door they tell him welcome Chavod. <coughs> they thought he's a jew he came with the kippah with a tzitzit and he comes inside and he is washing the hands, doing kiddush, waiting, 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 and all of a sudden they bring the maro. And when they bring the maro, he thought this is the the food is starting right now. And he took the maro, and he ate like a big piece of maro, because he was very hungry, he was waiting for a long time, and this is was so bitter, and he's like screaming, "Masase, what is this?" You are Jews, you know, started to say things about Jews. They understood that this guy is not it. He got so angry, he ran away. Bekitsu, he goes to the place where they always hang out. He's waiting there for a few hours at 12 a.m. His friend is coming also. Looks satisfied, you know, very happy after a good meal. You know, he also went to someone. 
And he tells him, no, how was the food? He says, you are Jews. You are only lying to people. You told me that they're going to have food. They gave me this thing that is so bitter. They, they, maybe they did it by purpose. And he told him, what do you mean? This is the Maror. He says, what's Maror? He says, oh, I forgot to tell you. I'm so sorry. But you know, if you would wait a little bit more, just a little bit more, would be patient, you know? Hold that bitterness that you have. You will eat so much food. You will enjoy so much. So Rabbi Nachman was saying this story about himself. He says the people that get close to his path, to the Hasidut path, in the beginning, they eat bitter. There is a lot of complications. It's very hard. They see that somehow when you, go, when you want to get close to God, God gives you a hard time in the beginning, gives you maro. But you have to be smart, not like this German guy. You have to be smart and say, okay, I will wait. And Bezat Hashem, if you pass the maro, you will get a lot of good enjoyments. And in a lot of things, it's like this. Also in marriage, by the way. A lot of people in marriage, they start life together, and then there is a maro moment. There's a bitter moment. You have to know, Rabbi Nachman says, if you will hold that bitterness, you will do the right things. You will not do the mistakes. You're not going to scream and run away and say, what is that? I don't want it. You have to understand, sometimes life is bitter. Live with that. It's going to pass, and then all the good things are going to come. And it's the same rule in every area in life. So that's the message that Rabbi Nachman wanted to pass. But I told you the story because, first of all, it's a nice story to say in the table of Pesach about Maro. And we need to um, make the Seder Pesach very fun. We have to make it fun. There is a question that was asked uh, but by one rabbi, and when I heard that question, it, I said like, wow, how I, I didn't have that question before. The question is about the Seder Pesach. If you look in the Torah, the Torah says, You have to say and teach your son and your grandson. You have to tell them on Pesach, on that night, how I tortured Egypt and Paro. And all the miracles that I did there. And the question is, Am Israel, we are such a merciful nation. We don't torture people. Right? We don't speak Lashon Ara. I mean, we should. Shouldn't. Yeah, according to what the Torah say, Torah is so nice and, and kind and teaching people morality and, and, and to live like good people. All of a sudden, the Torah comes here and says, No, you have to say to your son how God tortured Paro. You have to tell him how Paro had a hard time with those frogs coming on his hair and, you know, doing a noise to him. And you have to tell your son how he couldn't drink because there was everything was blood and how the, those big uh, bricks of, of, um, ice fell down and they were scared and you have to describe all of it to your son how I tortured Paro and the question is okay Paro was a bad guy I understand but why do we need to you know every year say how we tortured Paro it's not it's not a good message to teach even our enemies, we shouldn't make fun of our enemies, you know. Same question is about Haman, by the way. And a lot of people ask this. Okay, poor this Haman. Okay, he did a bad thing. He wanted to kill the Jewish nation. I understand. But every year you step on him and you're like, yeah, Haman, you know. Like, okay, guys, like, where is your mercy? I understand the guy did a, a bad thing. But why to continue 2,000 years later? You still every year remind it and you still hate him. To say how I tortured him. 
So the reason Chachamim tell us is the whole point of Agadah Shel Pesach is to implant in your kids the faith in God by saying the story and the history. Now there is a rule, if you want to convince someone, if you want to give a certain information to someone and you want him to believe in it and you want him to accept it, there's only one way to do it. You know how? By smiling to him. When we say, let's say, if I give you information and I'm very serious, you know, you will, the, 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 the information that I give you, the teachings that I teach you, would not be absorbed in your heart the same way if I smile to you and tell you the same thing. Or if I make you smile, that's even better. That's why a lot of our rabbis, before lecture, you know what they used to do? Say a joke. Why do they say a joke? Because when you say a joke, ah, everybody smiles. And now you accept it. Whatever you're going to tell me. By the way, this rule works with every person you want him to listen to. You are a boss. And uh, let's say uh, you have a company. You want the workers to listen to you. Make them smile. Make them joke. And tell them what you want. They will listen to you. Because people accept things when... There's also... Um, a Kabbalistic secret behind and the reason the um, you know how many teeth we have tooth or teeth how you say teeth, teeth. teeth. how many teeth we have huh? thirty-two right normal person has thirty-two thirty-two is gematria Numerical value of 32 is the word Lev. Lamed is 30. Bet is 2. Lev is heart. When you show your teeth, the 32, everything goes to the heart. Remember that. When you say something to someone and showing your teeth or he shows his teeth, the information comes to the heart. It's not comes to the brain, it comes to the heart. That's why if you want to tell your kids something and you want them to listen, do it with a smile or make them smile and then tell them. Tell them a joke and then tell them what you want from him. It will work better. Same thing we have to do on Agadah Shel Pesach. Pesach Seder shouldn't be a serious Seder. If you do it like a Canadian style, everybody sitting with a fork and then, then uh, this is not how seder should look like. And if you have it, you have the wrong seder. The seder Pesach should be funny. Funny means you prepare jokes for the kids, you prepare, not just for the kids, also for the adults. You prepare uh, candies, it says in Shulchan you have to prepare candies, prices, you have to prepare things, stories that will make it fun. Why? Because I would not understand the emunah, the faith would not be implanted in my heart unless I'm smiling. And he is smiling. And for that we need fun. That's why God says, you know what? I'm merciful. I don't want to torture Paro after he died and explain how I tortured. But I have to do it so your kids will be... You know, it's going to be funny for them. Why, oh, Paro, you know what's happened to him? It was there and it was that. All this scenario will make them laugh. And if they will laugh, they will understand the point. It will come inside their heart. You understand? And by the way, from Seder Pesach, we're also learning Chinuch Yeladim, how to educate our kids. If you want, if you want your kids, doesn't matter how old are they, to listen to what you're saying, to have a good relationship with you, be funny. This is one of your our jobs. I'm talking to myself as parents. We have to be funny with them. We have to be nice. We have to be smiling. Doesn't matter what's your character. Some people were born more serious. I understand. 
you live in Canada, people here serious, Canada dry, right? Sada, overcome it. We are Jews, we have, from Pesach we learn, we have to be funny. We have to be more excited. Smile. Rabbi Nachman says, oh, I can't smile. Force yourself to smile. Say jokes. Funny things. <clears throat> That's one of the preparations for Pesach. Jokes. Like kosher jokes, yeah? The jokes. Stories that will make people inspired. Also, Agadash al Pesach has a lot of secrets. I want you to guess how many words we have in Agadash al Pesach. Throw numbers. What do you think? How many words in Agadash al Pesach? I know you never counted. Our rabbi is counting, actually, <laughs> for different gimatriot reasons. How many words do you think Agadash al Pesach has? Hmm? 600. 7,000. Also 7,000. Okay, so the exact number of the Agada, only the Agada, the Magin, the exact number of the words on Agada Shel Pesach, that every person, by the way, has to say all those words. It's very important for our soul for the whole year. If you say the Agada, that's why if you invite people to your home, make sure everybody has his own Agada. Not listening, reading the Agada. If you don't know how to read it in Hebrew, read it in Russian, read it in English. So one of the ways to do the Agadah in Rabovadia and all the big rabbis did that, we want to participate, everybody to participate in the Agadah. So we let this kid to read, this man to read every phrase. However, when they read, we read with them. Whisper it. It's important. The Agadah has 1,820 words. Okay, this number is a very special number. And why am I telling you that? Because the Torah, Torah has like hundred thousands words, okay? But the name of God in the Torah, Yud, Hey, and Vav, and Hey, the main name of God, if you count all the names of God in the Torah, you're going to come to 1,820, exact number of the words of Agadash or Pesach. And this is not just a coincidence. It's because they're coming to tell us that Agadash al Pesach is as holy and as important as all the names of God in the Torah because it's the same number. So this is not just a story, oh, okay, we have to say the history to our kids, the fun. This is a serious ceremony. That has to be done properly, accurate, as much as we can, as much as possible. Because our soul will be affected the whole year by what we're doing, by what we're doing on the night of Seder Pesach. The night of Seder Pesach according to Kabbalah is the birthday of our souls. Our souls were created on the night of Pesach. When God created the world, He created on Aleph Tishrei. That's the physical world. The spiritual world and the soul of Adam Rishon was created on Nisan, half a year before that. And on Pesach, it was complete. That's why every Pesach, we have a birthday. Mazal tov. What a birthday? A spiritual birthday. And because we have a spiritual birthday, all what we do on the night of Pesach is affecting us for the whole year because everything goes by the beginning. That's why all those things that we do on Pesach are very very important even though we don't understand them it looks like very weird why do we eat matzot why do we need this plate with all those things inside but if you go into Kabbalah you understand that the three matzot symbolize chokhmah bina dat the three brains that we get new brain on Pesach and then we have on the right side the Zroa. Zroa is the people put wing 
the chicken wing, right? It should be a lamb, but doesn't matter. It's also good. This is symbolized the sfirah of chesed, kindness, the power of kindness. And the egg in the left side symbolized gvura. And the maro, which is the lettuce or the chrein, whatever you put in the middle, it's the tiferet. And then we have the charoset, netzach. And we have the, the karpas, the celery, which is hod. And then we have the malchut, which is also the horseradish, chazeret. Or we put the maro also there. So you have all together ten, ten sfirot. That's the ten powers that God created the world. When you put this kiara, you're bringing the light at that night to your house and to yourself. That's it. That's why it's very important to do it and to not touch it the whole night. The kiara, you shouldn't touch the egg from it. You should eat. You you leave it whole as it is until the end of the seder. Tomorrow, if you want to do something with that, you can. By the way, there is a sgula at the end of the seder. If you want your son to get married. You know this gula? You take the wing or the the zroa, whatever the meat, and you put it inside his pocket <laughs> without him knowing. Just like that, you come out, tuck, put it inside his pocket. And they say if you did it, this gula that he will get married that year. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Is <it> for a <laughs> son. For the daughter, you know what you want to do? In the, yeah, in the middle of the Magid Haggadah, we have this uh, scenario that we take the cup of wine, the second cup of wine, and we have to, Ashkenazim do it with the finger, you know, the, 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 the ten uh, makot. So, in general, it's like the dam, esh, timrot, ashan, three times, and then ten makot, so ten is going to be thirteen, and then... Rabbi Yudayan, on ten baim simanim, he was saying it uh, differently. Adash the tzach ba'achav, like three, another three. So it's sixteen times that we drop wine to the, from the what it's called, from the cup to the to the plate. Now Shkenazim do it with the finger. We do it with the, with the with the with the cup. But this wine that we do, there is a very deep reason, Kabbalistic reason why we do that. We give the bad powers their share in our uh, mitzvah. Now we have it in different places in Judaism. I'll give you an example. Are you familiar with tefillin? Right? I don't know if you saw it, but in the tefillin in the head, there is like a few hairs that are coming out. This is hairs, like it's a hair, it's a hair from a tail of a, a, a calf. Egil. Why do we need those hairs? What's the purpose of them? So according to Kabbalah, because tefillin is such a high mitzvah, such a high blessing, we cannot receive such a big light without giving the bad powers a little bit, a share in it. And that's their share. We let them take from there a little bit. Same thing we do in Birkat Amazon. When we bless after the food, we do the water. Right? By the way, also women need to do that. I don't know why in certain uh, custom women doesn't do it. According to Torah Kabbalah, they have to do that as well. Why? We're giving a part of our mitzvah to the bad power so they don't attack us. They don't bother us in the main mitzvah. Seder Pesach, it's a very, very important uh, mitzvah. We want to give a share to the bad powers. The share is this little bit of wine. That's why that wine, we make sure we don't spill it on the floor or, or anyone because it's like a, a wine that the bad powers are hanging there. So what should we do with that wine that after we dropped it, we have to put it in the sink or in the toilet or somewhere. The one who does it and takes it and spill it, 
you, if you want a zegula for marriage, for a daughter, give her to do that. And they say that if she do that, that same year, Bezrat Hashem, it opens her mazal to get married. I did it a few times. And it worked. Huh? She also did it. Also with your daughter, we did it. The year that she did it, she got married, Baruch Hashem. If you went to the washroom, you should do it, right? No, no, you, <coughs> no, no, you don't have to. Whatever was spilled to the actual plate is tame, is impure. Just don't touch it. That's it. Okay? So this is a zgula for, uh, for girls to get married. Again, it's a zgula. It's just opening the mazal. But at the end of the day, they need to do their job also, right? So... Yeah. Now, one very, very important thing is setting up the table before Pesach. The table has to be ready from before, means before the night. Every Shabbat, actually, the Alakha states that you should prepare Shabbat in a way that when you come from synagogue, the table is prepared, all set. The, the Gemara even say that there is two angels that coming and they walk you out of the synagogue, the men, and they when they come to, with you to Shabbat table, if they see that the house is ready for Shabbat, those angels say, Yair Ratzon, we bless you. And Bezat Hashem, the next Shabbat will be also like this. But if they come and they see that uh, everything is not ready, so they say, okay, next Shabbat will be also like this. And they don't give you a blessing. Same thing and more important on Pesach, that everything will be ready from before. Now, in Pesach Seder, Rabbi Chaim Palaji, Rabbi of Turkey, 200 years ago, he writes that the man has to have a big part in setting the table for Pesach. Usually, men, some, sometimes, Baruch Hashem, they setting the table, it's very good, they help with that. But a lot of times, that's usually, the lady is more aesthetic in those things she does it the way she likes and she's doing it in the houses in most houses even in those houses on Seder Pesach you should tell your husband or the husband should know it himself he needs to set up the plates to put the forks and the reason is again it's not a must but Rabbi Chaim Palaji says it has a big tikkun it has a big fixing to different sins that he did when he was young. Okay, we're not gonna say it, uh, yeah, and go into it, but there are certain things that it's fixing for the man, and it's good that he will put an effort to help with setting up the table for Chag Pesach. Doesn't mean that he has to do everything, but something he needs to do, and it's very, very important for that tikkun. <coughs> also, Anything we buy for Pesach, any money we spend for Pesach, and for every holiday in Shabbat, the Gemara in Masechet Beitza, page 15 says, that God pays you back. Because it's Otsaot Yom Tov, that's the expenses of a holiday. God says it doesn't come from your pocket, whatever you pay, I pay you back. It's a promise. It doesn't come from your account. So that's why, first of all, don't worry about expenses. Why do I say that? Because there is a mitzvah in Pesach, linhog srara. Srara means be like a king, like a queen. To be a little bit with the pride even. To behave with the pride. That's why we lean on our left and we someone else needs to pour the wine for us right and we have to wear very very fancy clothes and also buy fancy dishes the more fancy you are on pesach 
Rabbi Chaim Palaji says, you fixing the pride that you had during the year. We had pride during the year. We have gava, we have ego. That's a sin. That's not right. That's not good. How can I fix my ego when you have that holy ego, holy pride on Pesach? How do you do that? Fancy. Fancy plates, fancy table, fancy whatever you can, according to your um, to your uh, to your uh, level, whatever you have. But when you do that, it's a fixing for gava. And Chachamim say it's also zgula leashirut. It's a zgula to be wealthy. You want to be wealthy? Make your Pesach look like wealthy pe people Pesach. When you do that. It's a big segula. That's why it's good. Buy pillows for Pesach. Special to lean on your on your left, right? By the way, this is also something we need to go into it. The leaning part in Seder Pesach also has a very big spiritual effect on our life during the year. Why do we do this leaning? Leaning, Why do we lean on Pesach on the left side? Why can't we lean on the right side? And if you lean on the right side, you didn't fulfill the obligation. What's the reason we lean on the left side? Also, why is it so important? What does it do? According to Pshat, to the simple explanation, the reason we lean, it's because we want to feel like kings. Back in the days, kings were not sitting on regular chairs they were like lying down like this and people will give them the wine and whatever they will drink like this Nachon? Linda that's how kings used to do huh? you yeah. also used to do it that's the simple explanation Aval according to Kabbalah there is more deep explanation the reason we do that is because the whole concept of Pesach is fighting the evil inclination and the bad powers. In our birthday, spiritual birthday. And if we overcome them in those seven days, so we have a four on them for the whole year. That's why we remove chametz. What's chametz symbolize? Yetzerara. Evil inclination. Don't own it. Don't eat it. Remove it. Why? We have to overcome the Yetzirah. And also other things that we do in Pesach. Also the leaning part. The left side, it says in Tehilim 91. The Gemara in Masechet Barchot explains that around us we have a lot of energies. And also bad energies that surround us mezikim bad spirits where they are mostly located on your left side also Rabbi Nachman explains the Yetzirah is located in the left side of your heart halal asmali shalalev so he is there that's why when you lean on the left what you basically do you overcome the Yetzirah when you do it on Seder Pesach, it helps you to overcome it for the whole year. You understand? So people that didn't do the matzah and the wine leaning on Pesach, they will have a harder time with the Yetzirah. What's Yetzirah? When does Yetzirah come to you? First of all, in the morning. You wake up, he tells you, hey, go back to sleep. This is Yetzirah. If you lean on Pesach properly, when you need to do that, in the wine and the, the matzah, you will have more powers to overcome that desire of sleeping. Same thing as Yetzirah tells you, oh, eat this. But, but I don't know, maybe it's not kosher, maybe it is kosher. Who's going to give you the power to overcome? It's Pesach. If you do Pesach properly. That's why it's important to do that. Lean on your left. Now, According to Halakha, men are more obligated, women are less obligated. If a woman forgot, it's fine. But she also needs to do it, you know. But still, 
it's important to do that and to not miss that part, the leaning part. Now, halachically, it's, it's important to know when you lean on your left, you have to lean on something. A lot of people do that mistake. They just do like this, you know, in the, in the air, it doesn't count. You have to actually lean on something. So either have chairs with the, uh, how you call it, handles, arms, or ask the person beside you, can I lean on you? That's also an option. Or remove the chair to the other side and lean on the back of the chair because you put it on the side. You know, like do something to make sure you lean on something. Not just on the air, and it has to be in the 45 degrees. So if this is 90 degrees, this is 45 degrees. So that's the way you should do that. And you drink the wine, or you eat the matzah. In Maor and Karpas, we don't do the leaning part. Okay? So this is leaning. Now, each one of us needs to drink four glasses of wine. Why do we need to drink four glasses of wine? Four languages of redemption. What does it mean? <laughs> the simple reason you have to be happy. Hashem saved you, right? So you have to be happy. What makes people happy? Drinking wine. No, my. It's serious. Huh? Oh, yeah. Why four? Why four? So look at the gematria. Kos is a cup, right? In gematria kos, how much is in the numerical value? 86. With the kolel, with the word itself? 87. Okay? That's kos. If we take four kosot, it's 87 times four. How much is going to be? The Dura, you are good in math. 87 times four. Yeah, fair. 348. 300, 300 is shin, right? 40 is mem. 8 is chet. What do we get? Sameach. So, 4 cups, it's gimatria sameach. That makes you happy. Okay? Now, those 4 cups that we drink, they, have, they symbolize a lot of things. First of all, the the whole Pesach is about getting new brain. Okay? It's called in Kabbalah, Mukhin. Okay? Now, we have three levels of soul. Nefesh, it's in the liver. Ruach, it's in the heart. And Neshama, it's in the brain. Right? The neshama that is in the brain, we get a new one every Pesach. If we do everything properly. Now, the brain, we divide the brain usually to three, which is Chokhmah, Bina, and Dad, right? That's why we have three matzot, because by eating those matzot and doing everything with those matzot, we're getting a new brain. New neshama. However, the brain also divides to four. Because Chokhmah is the right brain. Bina is the left brain. And Da'at is the big back brain that is divided to two. And it comes to four at the end. That's why when we put Tfilin, how many parshiot we have in the Tfilin? Four, because there's four brains. And that's why we drink four glasses of wine, it helps by drinking them physically, the energy of the new soul, of the brain, of the mochin chadashot, the new mochin that you get, comes with the drinking of the wine. That's why it's very important to not miss one of them. And to drink them in the right amounts. And in Haseva, like we said. All the things that we do in the Seder are super important. It's not just like, just symbolized something. No, it's, it's real stuff. That affect our soul for the whole year. So this is 
this is the this is the wine. Now, lechatchila, you should drink wine with alcohol. However, for women and kids and people that drink wine with alcohol, they become, you know, very uh, drunk very uh, easily. They should drink grape juice that is kosher for Passover and for Kiddush, and that's fine. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the the karpas. I speak about it in the synagogue, and there's two people here that heard me speaking about it in the synagogue, but it's okay. I can say it again. Why do we eat the karpas on Pesach? Karpas is celery. What's the point of it? So the pshat reason, uh, we do it for so the kids will ask questions. Yishalu she'elot. They will say, hey, Abba, every Shabbat, we make it to the only once, and we say bracha. Why now we don't say bracha? What is this green thing? We, we, every Shabbat we don't do it. So we want the kids to ask. It's very important that kids ask questions. By the way, this is one of the things you should do. Tell your kids, whoever will ask questions will get a candy. About the Haggadah. You know? They need to ask questions. But according to more deep reasons, first of all, the karpas, and this is something you should say in the seder, if you flip the celery, you see the celery is has lines, right? It's like stripes. This is symbolize the ktonet pasim. Ktonet pasim. Remember Yosef? His father gave him a jacket, or a, what was it, a shirt? Ktonet. Pyjama. <laughs> Ktonet. Today you can say, huh? He gave him a dress with lines. And what happened because of that dress? The brothers were jealous. And they wanted to sell him. And they did it. To the Midianim, to the Ishmaelim, to the Egyptians. And then he found himself in Egypt and he becomes the... Almost the king of Egypt. And then he tells them, come to Egypt. So all the galut, all the exile of Egypt started because of what? Because of this ktonet pasim, this shirt with lines. With the lines. The celery remind us that you see, because of that jealousy, everything started, all the galut, all the exile. So we know where everything started from. So that's the celery, what's it symbolized? That's also a nice answer. There's another reason why we eat that. Because our fathers in Egypt, they used to eat a lot of celery. Did you know that? That was their like main, one of the main uh, vegetables that they were eating. The reason was because celery has a power of healing. It heals wounds. It's good for a lot of things. Also, I saw in uh, one of the books, if a person has inflammation, takes a little bit of juice of the celery, puts in the inflammation, it will heal it. In the ear, you put two drops, it heals it. Huh? Also good for losing weight. Okay, that's right. <laughs> celery is very good. They used to, they used to, in Egypt, they used, because they used to get a lot of hits from the Egyptians. They had a lot of wounds. So they ate a lot of celery to heal the wounds. They would put celery on the wounds. That's why to remember that, we eat also celery on Pesach. According to the Ben Ishchai, celery is called in Kabbalah katnut mochin small brain that's why we eat only a little bit of that and because we get the new brain new soul on Pesach it's not good to get the big soul in one shot you have to start from katnut from small brain so you eat celery in the beginning which brings you that energy and then you eat the matzot we bring you the gadlut mochin the big mochin that's why we eat celery According to Kabbalah on Pesach. By the way, because of that, the Ben Ishchai said, people should not eat celery all year round. However, 
it's only according to Ben Ishchai and Kabbalah. You don't have to do that. He says because it has an energy of Katnut Mukhin. Katnut Mukhin means, um, just to explain what's Katnut Mukhin is, Katnut Mukhin is a time that you don't see God. That things are not going the way you want. That everything is blocked. That you don't understand what's happening. That's Katnut Mukhin. You're very confused. Gadlut Mukhin is that everything is going the right way. I see God in everything I do. You know, this is Gadlut Mukhin. Okay? So again, you don't have to keep the Ben Ishchai's uh, uh, restriction in not eating celery all year round. You can eat celery. I think we anyways in Katnut in this uh, generation all the time. <laughs> so, but on Pesach, there is a mitzvah to eat celery a little bit. Okay? Because of Darwin's. That's the celery. By the way, why do we dip it in salt water, you know? Salty water. The Admog from Bez, it says an interesting reason. It says that Am Israel, they needed to eat the lamb, Korban Pesach, first time in Egypt. They needed to put that lamb three days on the bed and then to shecht it and make barbecue and eat it. Now, you're not allowed to eat Korban Pesach unless you have you have a Brit Milah. You are some circumcised. And Am Israel in Egypt, they didn't do circumcision. All those who were born in Egypt, they didn't do. They had their reasons why. So then God says, you're not allowed to eat it unless you do circumcision. Now, they, was, they were smelling the barbecue... And they were like, I want to eat it. So everybody ran to Moshe to ask to do circumcision. And they all were circumcised. Now you're not allowed to do circumcision unless you go to the mikveh. You have to be pure. So they all went to the mikveh. Thousands, hundreds and thousands of people went to the mikveh in one time. It made the Nile look like very dirty. Like when you put salt in the water, how does it look? It looks dirty a little bit. So to remember that scenario, we dip it in soy water. That's one of the Midrashim. And again, I'm giving you information to say in the Agadah Shel Pesach. The salt is because when you put salt in water in the beginning, Beginning, yeah, and when you when you mix it, it's 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 it looks blurry. Yeah, no, I and the mikveh, when they ma- went all to the mikveh, because thousands of people went to the Nile well, yeah. together to do mikveh, the Nile was looking blurry. A remembrance from that. There was no salt. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. but uh, you know we have salt in our sweat. When too many people comes together to one, you know, go to Chabad Gate, they have a very nice mikveh there. But, but, but when it's Yom Kippur, when everybody gets in the same mikveh, one after the other, it's a soup. Uh, it's a soup, yeah. That's uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, let's say another thing. Now, we said that one, one of the things in the... In Pesach, we have uh, we have the Seder Pesach, the order of Pesach, which is very important. Not just the order to do everything by the order, also to say the order. There's a very nice minhag. Before we start this, the Agadah, it's good to say to everybody the order. Yeah? Kadeh Magid yeah, we say all those ones, they have this nice melody. It's good to say, just by saying that, you bring a big energy to the place. Because all those, or, the, this order has a lot of secrets in it. Some people, they have a custom to say it a few times during the Seder. After like every step of the orders of the Seder, they say this uh, song. It's very nice. The kids feel good with that. Now, the Haggadah, when we say the Haggadah before, it's good to have in mind. 
then now I'm gonna say Agada Shal Pesach and I say holy words of the Haggadah. So we have to have in mind that this is a tikkun, this is fixing all the bad things that we were speaking the whole year. Bichayim Palaji says it's a fixing for that. So by saying the Haggadah, and by the way, be careful to not speak other things. You can you don't have to say only the Haggadah and that. You can stop in the middle and explain, brings more midrashim, brings more stories, but speak only about the Haggadah. Don't now speak about Bibi Netanyahu and the missiles from Iran. That's not the time. Okay? Sorry for reminding you that. But the time now is to speak about Agadah Shel Pesach. Now you can bring other things. You can speak. You can don't feel like, okay, I'm not allowed to speak only the reading that again. No, you can speak more. But only things that has to do with Agadah Shel Pesach. And have in mind, by saying that, you fixing all what you spoke, Lashon Allah, and everything. It says in the Zohar Kadosh that every night the angels sing in heaven. On the night of Pesach, they don't sing in heaven. They come down to our homes to hear us saying the Haggadah. Means every person in Agadah Shal Pesach, you're not alone. You have angels in your home. Mamashkach. That's what the Zohar say. That's why we should keep the place with kavod, speaking about, you know, good things, and making it, again, fun, nice, but also according to Torah and, uh, and Alakha. <coughs> Shulchan Orech. It's the part that everybody likes. It's where we eat. And Shulchan Orech, it's good in Shulchan Orech to uh, two customs that are very good to do. One of them is, first of all, to eat meat. Like real meat, not chicken. Lamb or calf or... Because that's a part of the Simcha, we have to be happy. It's good to eat an actual meat on Shulchan Orech, a little bit. Also, there is a good, good custom to say stories of miracles that happened to you. Kadosh Baruch Hu made a lot of miracles to us also. Right? Every year. I don't know. You were, you didn't stop in a stop sign and a cop uh, caught you and Baruch Hashem, you pray to God and uh, the, the cop says, you know what? Everything is okay. Go. Miracle. Or whatever, something that you can say that that for you was a miracle. It's good to write them through the year or remember them. And on Pesach, also say that. Because the Gemara say, Mi nes. Beniso, means he tells other people about the miracle that he had. Osim lo nes acher. They will make another miracle for you. That's why we praise God, we show the emunah, the faith that God is doing miracles to our fathers, but also to us. That's why spend the time of Shulchan Orech while you're eating all the rice and the meat and all those things to say individual miracles. That's a good custom and that's a zgula that God will do more miracles to you in that year. Don't forget about Afikoman <coughs> uh, to not eat too much. In Shulchan Orech, because we have afikoman, we have another 30 grams of afikoman that we need to eat. And afikoman is very, very important. We have to leave the taste of afikoman in our mouth. That's the last thing we eat on Pesach. And we should eat it before midnight. We eat the afikoman. And then we go. I mean, then we basically need to continue, say Divre Torah, sing songs. Some people have a custom to say Shira Shirim. You know, this is what usually we need to do. And they say you should fall asleep. Uh, huh? Saying the story, saying the, the, the Divre Torah, and fall asleep. 
That's the best way to fall asleep on Pesach. If you could do so, just don't forget to do Shema Yisrael before you go to sleep. Just do Shema Yisrael, and then whenever you fall asleep, you fall asleep. And the most important, say thank you to all the people that helped. Your wife, the kids, the husband, to Daraba. You did a lot. This is something that sometimes people forget. We have to appreciate. And this is also a part of Pesach. Bezat Hashem itbarach yiratzon. And the Kadosh Baruch will give us Pesach kasher v'sameach. That we all, Bezat Hashem, will get a new neshama, new mochin, good mochin, with a potential, good potential for a good year, spiritual year. Yiratzon that this year, they say, Benisani galu, Benisani atidin nigael. On Nisan we had a geula, a redemption. On Nisan we will have the last redemption, which is the redemption before the coming of Mashiach. And we see that it's starting, Baruch Hashem. So Nisan this year has a big, big, uh, you know, hope, Bezrat Hashem. Yiratzon that it will come with chesed, rachamim, with kindness, Yiratzon. Bezrat Hashem, we should all, uh, Kadosh Baruch should bless our homes with Shalom Bayit, Parnasa Tova, Briut Etana, V'chen Yiratzon Menomar Amen. If you have any questions about the Seder, we will have a little bit of time right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, what it, you said to make it fancy, but then what do we do about saying a prayer behind the tomorrow when we pray? Right. So, a person has to know himself. One of the things I didn't mention is the worst thing to do on Pesach is to get angry or to be sad. You lose everything by doing that. So, we have to be smart and make sure that we don't get there. And you're right, sometimes when you have uh, regular dishes because you want to make everything fancy. It's a zgulat to be rich and it's a tikkun for the gava, the pride, like we said. But then you know that you will have a very hard time. You don't have someone that helps you, right? And you need to wash the dishes for tomorrow and whatever. In this case, you should take disposable, but buy a fancy one, okay? Or we said already, God pays for it. Get uh, someone to help you. You can do both. Either that or that. Get someone to wash the dishes. Okay, so pay the $20, $30. But I will feel like a king. You know, I will feel like... Get someone to help at home. And I think that's the best solution. Either buy fancy disposable or uh, uh, get the help. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good question. To ask Ananju to turn on the dishwasher. So first of all, there is a big difference between asking Ananju on Shabbat and asking Ananju on Yom Tov. It's more lenient to ask him more things on Yom Tov, according to Sephardi customs. That's why. Um, but dishwasher also has Marita Ayn. It has different uh, different issues uh, it's not something that you really, really like need. He can do it also by hand. But in Halakha, it says like this. If you tell the Nanju, I need you to wash the tissues, okay? You don't tell them how, and he decides, because it's easier for him to turn on the dishwasher, that's not a problem. But you cannot tell him on Shabbat or whatever, turn on the dishwasher. Lechatchila, you shouldn't do that, even on Yom Tov. But if you tell him before, even if you tell him before, you can use the if you want. Uh, yeah, you can tell him. You can you, you can use the dishwasher. You can use whatever. You can wash. You can do whatever you. Want. I need the dishes to be washed. Okay. How you do that? That's your problem. Now, I give him an opportunity to do that without breaking, right? If he decided for himself, Allah says there's no problem. Okay? Women is also obligated to lean in our times. However, if the lean if the women didn't lean, she doesn't need to repeat that again, she fulfilled the obligation. And men no, man needs to drink the wine again. 
or either Matsaya. So that will be a problem because we don't know what's the percentage of the grape juice today. Oh. With water. She wants to water it down with water. So I don't know how much, for example, if you drink Kedem grape juice, okay? I don't know how, ma how many percentage of of of, uh, of grapes there are. Maybe the rabbi, no, Kvodarav, you know? כמה הפרסנט יש בקדם ענבים, אתם יודעים? יש הבדל בין הזכוכית לבין פלסטיק. אוקיי. הזכוכית לא מבושה דבר. כן. שם יש אחוז מאוד גבוה של יין ופחות יין. אפשר להוסיף שם מים. אהה. אבל בפלסטיק זה כבר מקסימום מים. הבנתי. So he says that, he says in קדם, they have, they have the glass and they have the plastic. The glass has more uh, wine, more grapes. So if you add a little bit of water, it's fine. Not too much. Not 50-50 for sure. Yeah? But it's fine. In the plastic ones, it's going to be a problem because it's ha it's, it has less, uh, less grapes. What I would suggest is um, what you can do is you can take grapes, okay, and squeeze it yourself. Just buy grapes and just squeeze it with a machine or whatever and make a bottle for you and use that. This is a grape juice, you understand? Before Pesach, of course. And just drink that. This is no sugar added. It's pure grapes. And it's the Chathila, it's 100%. You water down. That's how you... And if you want to water down that, you can water down almost 50, 40% of that because this is pure grapes. You understand? <laughs> yes. Huh? Okay, so leaning is not for all the seder. There are people that lean the whole seder. That's a... a, a that's a restriction that some people want to do, Chavot. But according to Allah, you have to lean in the four cups every time you drink the cup. When you eat the matzah, when you eat the sandwich of the matzah and maro, and when you eat the afikoman. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you know how in Bukhara they used to do the the Z? They used to do they used to do the Seder Pesach on the floor. They put a big carpet with a lot of pillows and a small like not not a high uh, table and everybody is sitting that Zat Hashem hopefully I wanna do it once. I, it looks very cool. I have a friend in Israel that did it last year like this. It was very nice. The Agada has almost no differences, but maybe in small things, yeah. That's why um, you can read also Sephardi, go so Ashkenazi, but it's always good to stick to your minhag, right? Yeah, Malaso. Okay. Yeah, Ashkenazi, yeah, Ashkenaz. yes. So I said, could be a grape juice without alcohol, but the grape juice has to be like kosher for kiddush, like kedem grape juice, like we said. Yes, can be, no problem. Yeah. Hopefully, if everything will be good, this recording will be available on our channel, yeah, on the English channel, yeah. He will put it. Chag Sameach, all the best. Okay, Bezat Hashem, God bless. Olam Israel, Shiyeh Shalom Baaretz, Shiyeh Bezat Hashem. For the soldiers of Israel, Kadosh Baruch will give them power to win. And Bezat Hashem, give us good news. Amen, Kenny Ratzon.